let's say that no one was overweight, no one had diabetes today, and we wanted to create a world that guaranteed that half of us were on the path to diabetes, what would we do? What would you do? I mean, when I think about it, I think I'd uh, put junk food on every corner, I'd put soda in every meal, I'd make sure the portion sizes are as big as possible, I'd cut the funding for physical education, I'd put ads on TV over and over and over again, making soda and junk food look as delicious and tempting as possible. I'd get superstars, athletes, entertainers, to be the spokespeople to try to convince us to eat and drink those products. So in some ways, you get what I'm saying. We've been living out this experiment for the last 50 years. We have done all of those things and more. We have designed our communities for disease in a way that makes obesity and diabetes the natural consequences. It's time for us to now turn all of that around and design our communities for health. East LA has the highest diabetes rate of any region in Los Angeles. East LA is predominantly Latino. East LA has few uh, opportunities to buy healthy foods. The mindset here is the more I could get for less. When uh, we know the reality is if you're getting more for less, you're usually not getting a good product you're usually getting something that is probably not good for you but in our culture it's like it's like the deal I got I got to get that deal East LA is one of many many communities that is a combination of a healthy food desert and a junk food swamp we call it an obesogenic environment because everything about it promotes obesity in the marketing campaigns surrounding Coke with a lot of young, really healthy, fit people who drink it, but they also exercise a lot. It sends this message to us that somehow we could be like that too. It's called aspirational marketing. And it's a very important aspect of how these companies affect us in unconscious ways. They even do something they now call neuromarketing, where they, they get people, um, volunteers, and put them in a, in a big MRI machine, and they watch the impact of different advertising messages on their brains. And so they know exactly what it is, what the look and feel and words of an advertisement are that are gonna hook us deep in our brains beyond our consciousness. What's gonna hook us the most? Our stomachs are a market. We can only handle so much food. They're competing for stomach share. How much of your stomach they can own. We're really under attack. They're doing it for one reason and one reason only. They're doing it to make money. Talk to me a little bit about um, soda consumption. Soda is huge. I mean, soda is um, soda is a part of every meal. It's um, and even if it's not soda, you're talking about a a sugar uh, heavy uh, drink. But you know, soda is huge because it's cheap. It's a it's a it's a cheap option if you don't go with the uh, you know major brands. There's always the off brands that you could get. At uh, you know at any dollar store and and uh, you know there was a time when I was growing up where the dollar store only had the off brands but now you're you're seeing the the major brands 
at uh, at the dollar store. So part of every meal is, is is soda. It's it's a hard hard habit to kick when it's introduced to you at a very very young age. The earlier the introduction of sugary beverages uh, to children, even in the first year of life, the earlier the introduction, the higher the effect on childhood obesity. Chronic diseases associated with obesity are chronic, meaning they're long term. And so the longer you have the obesity, the longer uh, you have um, likely to develop those diseases like diabetes and cardiovascular disease and liver disease. So clearly we know from a variety of studies that uh, early introduction of sugary beverages uh, to children promotes uh, early onset of obesity. That's one thing that we do talk about openly with like a lot of our, our members, uh, where it's just, uh, you know, the temptation around you, so to speak, and, and soda's gonna be a, a huge one. When folks from the old world came to this new world, and they wanted to take over the land, they realized that smallpox killed the native population. And so they took blankets with smallpox and gave them away to native people. In some ways, we're doing that same thing now. Food and beverage companies are handing out, instead of blankets with smallpox, they're handing out bottles and bars with sugar, and it's having the same impact. It's happening a little more slowly. It takes 10, 20, 30 years before someone with diabetes is gonna lose their foot and then their leg and then have kidney failure. But it has the same impact. There is a, a real question in the scientific community around whether exercise is a solution to bad diet. And I think we can all pretty much assume that we can't exercise away an unhealthy diet, no matter what these companies throw at us. A healthy diet is the foundation of fitness, right? Exercise is one step, it's a great step. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need to overhaul other things. And that's a struggle amongst our community as well. It's almost like they try to negotiate with you and it's just like, there's no negotiation. It's like, you, you kind of have to, that's another step, you know? So, so that's kind of one of those, those, those battles that we have. It's that old school mentality of, of you know what, I'm, I'm gonna pass away and, and I'm, I, I, no one's gonna tell me what I can, what I can and, and can't eat. If you're not mentally prepared, you're gonna mentally prepared to fail. And in my family, it's kind of who doesn't have diabetes. It's pretty sad. Uh, I've had my grandmother pass away from diabetes. My mother has diabetes. My father has diabetes. Outside of myself and my younger brother and sister, maybe a cousin, I'm going to say everybody else in my family has diabetes and have a, a pretty large family. My mother had type 2 diabetes and actually passed away from, uh, from complications of type 2 diabetes. It was difficult to see her, you know, the, the physical struggles that she went through. She started losing her vision, um, her house started deteriorating as she got older. Uh, started losing feeling in one of her legs. Um, every time she would go to the doctor, it was more bad news. You know, uh, eventually, you know, the doctor said she might eventually have to have a leg amputated, which eventually led to kidney failure. So she had um, she had to go on dialysis. She ended up only lasting a week on dialysis, and then she died from complications from the dialysis treatment. We did a study not long ago, last year actually, we did a study that showed that more than half of Californians now have either diabetes or prediabetes. It's bad now and there is still a tsunami of diabetes coming our way. And again, it is low-income communities and communities of color that are being hit now and are going to be hit by this tsunami. At some point, you have to start thinking, okay, there's something going on here beyond individual willpower. This isn't just a problem of personal responsibility. There's something wrong with the bigger picture. And that's when th real change can happen. Growing up, you know, having seen this, like what was going through your head and what did you feel? Um, that I needed to make a change in my life or, you know, eventually, you know, I was probably gonna head down the same path. 
My introduction to CrossFit was kind of, uh, you know, in part due to uh, my friend Sergio Martinez. We started out in about a 10 by 10 garage. We never pressed overhead because, you know, there was always some limitations there. I started inviting friends over. Hey, try this, try this, try this. And before I knew it, I had a group of about 12 friends that would come every day and, you know, we'd crank out a CrossFit workout. And that's kind of where it all started. Little by little, I just, more people just started showing up. I'll never forget the summer night. There was 29 people working out. All right, now the backyard is packed. Now the garage is full. You know, people started recommending friends and, and started bringing their, their, their family. We had this uh, file folder box where it was just like people could drop money, but I don't think people were dropping money, <laughs> to be honest. But they, they could if they wanted to. We would never check. It was, it was like the Eagle Scout honor, honesty system, but we would never check. We, we just really liked doing it. Time came where the city came down on us and they're like, hey guys, you can't be running a gym out of your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> and then so we had a major decision to make. That was how Backyard CrossFit was created. It's really fulfilling to see that we're touching people, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis and, you know, helping them, you know, eventually with their, with their health and fitness goals. And not only that, um, just, you know, helping out the community in general, you know, building relationships here as well. In our community is one of those things, if you're invited and you're my guest, I'm gonna make you feel welcome. And I'm gonna make you feel like you're a part of the household. Mi casa es su casa. Watching them change the way they eat, watching them become better people. Their whole family, I like guess, it's, it's a family change, not just them, and it's, 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 it's pretty incredible. I'm, I'm pretty grateful to be part of this. I know people who have been in CrossFit for for a long time and they are living different lives. Folks who, who change their lives like that, um, what, what I see is they need three things. They need the internal desire and motivation for change. They need the knowledge. What can I do to change? Whether it's changing my, uh, how I exercise, what I do for exercise, what I eat, how often I eat. Um, they need knowledge. But most important, they need support. We all need support to change how we live our lives. That's just the basic nature of human beings. We are social animals. When people feel shame, when they feel stigmatized, they may retreat. They may not want to be around other people, right? And that's making the problem worse. That's even less social connection. But finding ways to connect warmly with the people you're coaching and the people in your fitness community is gonna help the greater good. I know it's hard when you have grown up on a diet of fast food, when you have grown up learning the pleasure and the stress reduction related to grabbing a chocolate bar or a donut, it's really hard to break those habits and learn to eat differently. Um, I sometimes wonder whether all our hope goes back to children and just starting fresh with the children. In California, if you look at how much soda teenagers are drinking, half of white teenagers are drinking a soda or more a day. Three quarters of Latino and African American teenagers are drinking a soda or more a day. One 20 ounce soda has 16 teaspoons of sugar. If you drink one soda a day for just one week is this much sugar. You drink two sodas a day for two weeks and the studies show that the amount of fat in your liver more than doubles. And it's that liver fat that leads directly to diabetes. So we know exactly how this stuff works. The product is designed to be attractive to a specific kind of kid, and the marketing around it is designed to be attractive to a specific kind of kid. And if they can give it a little bit of a health halo, so that that just takes the parent down a notch, when that parent is getting nagged, they can say, well, Capri Sun, it has some fruit 
in it. Or I'll just give the kid one, right? The kid's gonna want two. The kid's gonna want five. It's designed to be hyper palatable. What impact does that have? We know exactly what impact that has. We know that kids born um, in the year 2000, um, half of all kids will have diabetes sometime in their life. Two thirds of Latino and African American kids will have diabetes sometime in their lives. A big shift in this discussion is for us to understand, really understand in a deep way, what is going on on the other side of this equation in the marketing, what is going on in the food and beverage industries, and how they think about us. Right now, there are virtually no regulations at all about what food and beverage companies can do to convince our kids, trick our kids, seduce our kids into eating and drinking more and more of their products. Did you know that the percentage of youth, which is the age of 2 to 17, by existing in California, 48% Latino drink one to two sugar sweet and beverages a day. When I speak with students about the effects of soda, I let them know the truth. Do I tell them, do you think the soda industry cares about your health? Within the school, there's one out of three students that have prediabetes. Students here at Roosevelt um, felt very passionate about working on this issue because if they're not affected by it, their mothers are affected, their fathers, their grandparents, and they don't want to see anything happen to their family. My dad um, was diagnosed with diabetes like when he was young, like I would want to say 20 maybe. Well, I have a grandma who has diabetes and I have an uncle who's diabetic as well and they both inject themselves with insulin every morning. It says a lot about what we eat and what's around us and what's easy for us to get, like to drink and to eat. We are a low income community and we are, like we have these health issues so it does like affect our lifestyle and the way we're living. This card means to me that like a soda like contains diabetes basically. The Coke company, they know that. They know that it could give you diabetes, but you know, companies don't care about that. They care about profit. They care about the money. They don't care about your health because your health is basically based on you. But like this shows like the option, like that you have an option. If either you want diabetes and you're gonna drink that soda or you're gonna throw it away and get a healthier option. Working with young people in the high schools especially, um, the work that they're doing is making sure that at the very least in the high schools they have access to healthy beverages, that there's access to water instead of soda everywhere you turn. It's not that we don't know how to fix this. We know. We've got natural experiments. We've got clinical trials. We've got a lot of different strategies. Uh, we have the evidence. The problem is putting that evidence into action. We need to help communities change the context in which um, people are making those choices. And we need to support people in changing their behavior, um, in eating healthier food and exercising more in the midst of an environment that um, makes that difficult. My wish for everyone, I guess, is that they could all find a community of people like this who are all positively supporting each other in improving their health. Since day one, the community was great. When we started, I couldn't even run. I lost about 60 pounds. And sure enough, ever since then, I'm able to run. Everything's positive, and I just feel great. I have a lot of fun here. I always want to stay longer. We're all friends here. Nobody's like rude or anything and it's really nice and the coaches are really nice too. 
I always want to try my best in everything that I, can, I do here. I felt like I wasn't living the life that I was meant to lead. I was overweight, approaching middle age, and diabetic. For the first time since having been diabetic, my blood glucose readings are of that of a healthy person. I want to show people that you can do it. It doesn't matter if you're diabetic. You can, you, you can reverse it. I, I truly believe that now. My numbers prove it. I feel like my journey has purpose and I feel like my journey has a destination, not an expiration. And I believe I'm an athlete and I'm a CrossFitter. You are, CrossFitters are the leading force in the world today in the war on chronic disease. In fact, you're the only front where anything positive is happening, anything viral is happening, where is a spontaneous, self-sustaining, growing community challenging, successfully fighting chronic disease, it is you and you alone. This is a noble fight. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Just no me baño.